My name's Nicholas Farrelly. I'm a researcher in the Australian Research Council Centre of Excellence in Policing and Security, uh, which is a part of the ANU's College of Asia and the Pacific. Uh, Thailand uh, has experienced a pretty turbulent time over recent years uh, and even uh, an irregular reader of any of our newspapers would know that from time to time it hits the front pages. Uh, there are a few reasons that Thailand has been going through a, such a turbulent recent period. Um, those reasons are interlocked and interlinked in ways that it's hard to fully tease out, um, but I'd suggest that there are three main reasons that Thailand has been uh, having such a rough recent history. Uh, the first of those reasons is that Thailand no longer has a consensus about its national political institutions. And that lack of consensus manifests itself in many different ways, um, but particularly around the parliamentary system, there's no longer a sense that everybody in Thailand agrees on what kind of system will best position the country for the future. Uh, that consensus was um, eroded firstly during the period of former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra's rule. Um, he of course won a number of elections but then he was turfed out of office uh, by a coup in September 2006. Uh, that coup put pay to many of the idealistic notions that had come to infuse Thai democracy and since then we've had uh, regular periods of street protest, of confrontation, of provocation uh, and all of those confrontations and provocations are ultimately um, seeking to determine uh, the best portfolio of national institutions. And on that point, there is uh, profoundly uh, a huge lack of agreement. The second reason that Thailand is going through such a relatively rough period uh, is that it has experienced such tremendous social and economic change over the past four or five decades. Uh, that economic change has meant that uh, many of those people who were in Thailand's uh, original peasantry, uh, who were um, largely disenfranchised and dislocated from the national mainstream, have actually started to become more involved and more integrated into national life. At the same time, their share of national income has fallen as a relative proportion. Um, at the same time, of course, the country has, as a whole, got wealthier. Uh, those discrepancies and disparities have now formed into the red shirt political agenda, uh, which, while arguing for many other things, is ultimately targeting, in its current manifestation on the streets of Bangkok, the kind of double standards that many people in the rural areas of Thailand continue to find outrageous. And by calling for the end of those double standards, the red shirt movement is tapping into a great deal of dissatisfaction uh, with the way that the spoils have been shared uh, after the recent and rather phenomenal uh, economic growth that Thailand has experienced. Uh, and then the third reason that Thailand has been having a bit of a bumpy ride recently, and here I will, you'll have to forgive me, um, need to lurch into the realms of speculation and a more tentative analysis, uh, but there is a, a big sense among many analysts of the country uh, that elite politics and particularly palace politics play a big role in the kinds of tensions that we see um, emerging onto the streets of Bangkok as I speak. Uh, those tensions uh, do, at least in part, come back to the anxieties that many Thais feel about the end of the current king's reign uh, and the future of Thailand's monarchy. Uh, that monarchy uh, has experienced a very good run under the current king, but as his reign comes into its waning years, uh, there is a sense that a great deal of jostling and manoeuvring and repositioning is underway. Uh, it's difficult to be too certain about the exact character of that, but I'm still very inclined to indicate that palace and elite politics have a big part to play in what we're seeing in Thailand's recent political and civil strife.